The psalmist sings, for you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all other gods. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Please rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. By faith, draw near to God, who is gracious and blesses us, and whose face shines upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Be glad and sing for joy, for God brings justice and equity to all nations of the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase, and God, our God, has blessed us. May God's blessings continue as we join the shouts of praise. Let us worship God. be seated. Let us have confidence to approach God where there is grace and mercy. Trusting in God's love and forgiveness, we join in a time of confession. Let us begin with a time of silent confession. And now, praying responsively. For the times we haven't loved others as you have loved us, God of grace, forgive us. For wasting your gifts and hoarding our goods, God of grace, forgive us. For being poor stewards of the earth and hurting your creation, God of grace, forgive us. For avoiding people who are strange to us and ignoring people in need, God of grace, forgive us. 
for all the ways we turn from you and contribute to systems that bring death instead of life. God of grace, forgive us. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us and makes us whole, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to, be God. to God. Amen. Amen. Please rise in body or in spirit as we sing. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. World without end. shall be. Amen. Having received God's forgiveness and peace, let us share that peace with everyone we meet, beginning here and now. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ with a word or a wave. time kids are also invited to meet Julie and Lindsay at the back and they will return at the end of the sermon. Let us pray. God, you are the beginning and the end of all things, the first and the last. Send your Holy Spirit to open our minds and hearts to your truth so that we may find new beginnings in your word and in living out your purposes, our ultimate end. Amen. Our text today will be from a number of psalms, but we begin with Psalm 1 at the beginning of the book. Listen for the word of the Lord. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here in the first psalm, we are contrasting two ways of being, righteousness or wickedness, justice or evil, life or death. It's all very clear-cut and well-defined. The lives of people who are faithful to God are marked by happiness as opposed to perishing, life abundant as opposed to destruction. And what's at the center? Flourishing to achieve what we want to achieve and to 
accomplish what we want to accomplish. How many of us want that for ourselves, for our children and our grandchildren, and for folks who are important to us? We don't want to see our families hit hard times or our businesses come to ruin. We don't want to see tragedies in our schools and seemingly inescapable violence. We don't want to lose faith in our public servants or in our worshiping communities. We want these important parts of our lives to flourish, to be rich and meaningful and expansive over time. And God wants this for us too. In John's epistle, the writer prays that we may prosper and be in good health just as our souls prosper. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Psalm 1 presents a pretty clear path for that to take place. Psalm 1 is about this personal mode of conduct that brings flourishing. And when worked together, it may flow out in a shared framework through which entire groups of people thrive. But is it reality? Was it reality for ancient Israel when these psalms were written? No. Is it reality for us in our world every day? Certainly not. This first psalm sets up an ideal that is both simple and improbable. Is it any wonder that soon after this psalm, the laments begin piling up? People praying, God, where are you? Psalm 3, O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising up against me. Psalm 4, answer me when I call, O oh God, of my right. Psalm 5, listen to my words, O oh Lord. Listen to the sounds of my cry. Psalm 6, Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul is struck with terror, while well, you, O Lord, how long? Psalm 7, save me from my pursuers, or like a lion, they will tear me apart, they will drag me away, and no one will rescue me. Psalm 10, why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble, while the wicked say there is no God, their ways prosper at all times, and on, and on, and on. These psalms of lament recognize two things. First, that life is hard, and that a lot of the time, the world that we live in doesn't operate like the world of Psalm 1. There's pain and grief, there are threats, and there are dangers, unfulfilled longings, Where's all that promised blessing and happiness? The second thing that laments recognize is the way to deal with pain and fear and doubt and grief is to tell the truth about it, sometimes to sing the truth about it. This is one of the differences between the righteous and the wicked in the world of the scriptures. The righteous aren't righteous because they're perfect or sinless. The righteous are considered righteous because they tell the truth of their lives to God and to others. And since laments at their core tell the truth, they too, in a mysterious way, are part of that Psalm 1 world of blessedness, even though the circumstances they describe are far from happy. And then there are Psalms to reassure us to remind us that God is present with us in the hard times, guiding our lives to something meaningful. The psalmist sings, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are good words, healing words, hopeful words. And yet in the times of our lives when we've moved out from the green pastures and the still waters, in the times when we find ourselves in the center of death's shadowy valley, still so far off from the promises of lavish tables and anointing oil and cups running over it can lead to a crisis of faith. A crisis when black folks are murdered while shopping. A crisis when Taiwanese siblings in faith are killed over lunch after worship. A crisis when young lives are ended in terror and confusion and pain. A crisis. When I'm writing this on a Wednesday, wondering what's even worse will happen by Sunday such that the things that are breaking my heart today will no longer be as meaningful by tomorrow. A crisis. One of my favorite books on the Psalms is Mark Futado's Transformed by Praise. I'm drawing a lot of, from his thinking today and what I have to share. He notices something in Psalm 73, about halfway through the book of 150 Psalms. He notices that the composer of Psalm 73 is having a crisis of faith too. And in a way, this faith crisis is the crux of the book of Psalms. We move from the clear-cut world of Psalm 1, traveling through the laments and the cries for help. We hear the psalms of trust and reassurance that everything will be okay, but by Psalm 73, the writer says, enough, I've had it. I've looked around and I've seen how things really work in the world. It's the wicked that flourish and the righteous who suffer. I see how things are. The world of Psalm 1 just isn't so. But then over the course of the psalm, there is a shift in the heart of the psalmist. I'm going to sing a simple setting of Psalm 73. You're welcome to listen or join in as you catch on. But here's the invitation. Watch for the shift in what's going on with the psalmist as we listen to the heart of Psalm 73. All my life I've sung a jealous song All my life I've sung a jealous song. All my life, I've sung a jealous song. The evil people flourish and the good folks suffer wrong. All my life, I've walked the way of God. All my life, I've walked the way of God. All my life, I've walked the way of God. But walking got me nowhere, and I thought it never would. All my life, I've tried to reason why. All my life, I've tried to reason why. All my life, I've tried to reason why. I could not find the answer, and I lost the will to try. You draw me near to you, O God. You hold me in your hand. You treat me as 
and honored one with your beloved I stand you draw me near to you O oh God you hold me in your hand you treat my vision as only God could do for God has changed my vision as only God could do so where's the shift in the heart of the psalmist it's in this movement from lament to praise what made all the difference in the midst of all the worst of what life has to offer, God showed up. And the psalmist encountered God there. Did the conduct of the wicked change? No. Did the authority of tyrants change? Not just yet. The change is in the heart of the worshiper. As they draw near to God by faith, and encounter God in the songs of praise. Following the shift in Psalm 73, the trajectory of the book of Psalms takes a turn toward new creation. It's almost as if God has heard the psalmist's critique and said, yes, you're right. We can dream of the world of Psalm 1 where everything is clear-cut, good and bad, right and wrong, where God's presence is known and God's purposes always lived out. But that's not happening. The world needs to be made new. And the second half of the book of Psalms offers us this journey of new creation, a new telling of that story from Genesis that we can be drawn into and participate in. Psalm 88 cries out, I am in the lowest pit, in the bleakest depths, overwhelmed by all the waves. The darkness is my closest friend. For sometimes the world is formless and void. Bleakness over the face of the deep, but some good news. The Spirit of God ever hovers over our troubled waters. That wind from God, that sacred breath, ever ready to gust clear breeze into the confusion and bring new order out of the chaos. Psalm 98 sings about God coming into the world in a new way to do justice, to restore the disturbed order of communities. The psalmist writes that at God's coming, every heart prepares room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat their sounding joy, repeat their sounding joy. Psalm 104, God's Spirit is sent forth to renew the face of the earth, creating and recreating out of lightlessness, light, out of chaos, order, out of nothing, all that is. As we get closer to the book of Psalms' conclusion, we're no longer finding laments. But psalm after psalm after psalm after psalm of praise. For this is ultimately a book of praises. We come to God with the truth of our lives, with the pain and the grief and the unfulfilled potential. We come to God with cries for justice, for humanity, and for restoration of the earth. And as we open ourselves to God in worship, God shows up and does a new thing. The entire book of Psalms is moving toward this crescendo of praise. This is the order of the book. This is the order of our lives. This is the order of our faith. 
Jewish people recount their ancestors' laments, enslaved in the land of Egypt, and then having passed through the Red Sea's drowning waters, they lend their voices to the praises of their ancestors, the songs of Miriam, of Moses, of Aaron. Christian people recall Jesus on the cross, quoting from the beginning of Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Christ's resurrection, he might as well be quoting the end of that same psalm that says, I will proclaim your name to my people. In the congregation, I will sing your praise. I think the ordering of the book of Psalms holds a promise of God for us, that sorrow lasts for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That the world is not as it should be, but God is ever on the move through you and through me as we love and serve unto Christ, making all things new. Where will this love take you today? To what service is God calling you toward healing the world's laments and unleashing people's songs of praise? For whether we participate in the work of gun reform or preach or prophesy or make music and art, whether we invest generously in the lives of our children and the emerging generations, whether we participate in the ordering of our shared life together such that people flourish and communities thrive, such that violence is banished and corruption comes to ruin like it's Psalm 1 all over again. May we ever participate in this rhythm of the Psalms. Lament to praise, death to life, violence to accountability, to justice, flowing from our hearts this day as ever. Amen. We begin with the first psalm. We are going to end with the last one. This is a setting of Psalm 150. And truth be told, I don't know it well, but we'll learn it together. It's very easy. Let's stand. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, everybody praise the Lord. Praise God with the sound of the trumpet, praise God with the lute and harp, praise God with timbrel and dancing, praise God wherever you are, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody. 
everybody praise the Lord. Praise God with the holy symbols. Praise God with strings and pipes. Praise God with clashing symbols. Praise God with all of your might. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise God in the holy temple. Praise God for mighty deeds. Praise God for those bountiful mercies. Praise fulfills your needs. Praise ye the Lord. the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise God on top of the mountain. Praise God both day and night. Praise God down in the valleys. Praise God who's making things right. be seated. Well, good morning. My name is Lindsay Murphy, and I am one of the pastors here. We'd like to welcome you to worship on this Memorial Day weekend. And with that, we would like to lift up and give thanks for all of those who have so faithfully served our country, those who have given their lives over hundreds of years to fight for what is right and to fight for the chance for all of us to be free, and we are grateful. I have noticed that some of you have already done this, but if you have not, these are what we call our red friendship registers, and they are a chance for us to see who is with us in worship this day, also for you to have a chance to see who is sitting next to you in the pews. So if you haven't done so, if you can sign and pass these down, we'd greatly appreciate it. I want to draw your attention to a few events coming up in the life of the church. We try to have the most um, upcoming events on the back of the bulletin, and I want to take you through those real quick. Starting next Sunday, we will have a cereal buffet in the gym prior to our 9.30 a.m. worship service. It will begin at 9 a.m., and we'll have all the cereals that you see as you go through the grocery line both the ones that are a little bit more sugary and the ones more healthy, so hopefully there's something for everyone. We hope you will join us anytime between 9 and 9.25-ish for our cereal bar all the month of June. Also, this is our last week or so of um, collecting snacks for Leshi. So if you happen to be at Costco or grocery, another grocery store or Target and want to pick up some snacks, Leshi greatly appreciates that as they um, help provide snacks for over 300 students daily. And between June 14th and June 23rd, we will be building a tiny house for Lehigh Low Income Housing Institute. And we are looking for those who want to come help build or paint or put that together. There is a sign-up sheet on the website and through Bridges. And so we're encouraging those who are interested to sign up now. No building, prior building experience is needed. We will find work for everyone um, sixth grade or older. So if you are interested, feel free to talk to me afterwards or go ahead and sign up online. And now we want to recognize that all that God gives us is the Lord's and the Lord's to use and that we are called to be faithful stewards of what God gives us. Offering is an act of our worship, and so we recognize the ties, the time, the talent that God calls us to use for God's work in the world. Let us say a prayer this morning for our offering. Lord, we thank you for your generosity, for the ways that you care for us, for the ways that you desire that each one of your children will be taken care of. 
Lord, sometimes it feels like the need is overwhelming, but we know there is also an abundance if we will share. Show us how to be good stewards of all that you have given us, and thank you for the offering that we can give to your church for the, your ministry in the world. Amen. It is good to be together, and as we move into our community prayer, I invite you to get out the prayer sheet in your bulletin, as there will be some times of silence to lift up our community. Please join me in prayer. Oh God, you are the creator of beginnings and ends. This week, we have once again been reminded that our time here on earth is fragile, vulnerable, and something to be celebrated. We gather this morning as a community that desires to know you, to experience your lavish love, and to praise your name. We give thanks for the freedom we have to gather here in the Pacific Northwest and the freedom to proclaim your name without fearing persecution. This Memorial Day weekend, we remember the fallen who have sacrificed their comforts, family time, and ultimately their lives for us to experience the freedoms we enjoy today. As we remember their sacrifice, may we be encouraged to continue the work of service and love. Lord, unite us this morning as we pray for our community and our world. Walk with us, Lord, as we try to make sense of the lives that were ended this week due to preventable gun violence. 
Our hearts are heavy laden by the evil demonstrated by such hatred, and we are left wondering what can be changed and how do we begin, how do we begin again to bring forth new life? We ache for the teachers and administrators who must prepare for the unimaginable each day at school. Guide our anger towards righteousness as we process the preventable deaths inflicted, inflicted upon the children and teachers at Robb Elementary School, for the grocery shoppers in Buffalo, New York, and church members at the Taiwanese Presbyterian Church in California. We pray for the mothers, fathers, children, siblings, and family members who are forever changed from violence. God, as we answer your call to be peacemakers, give us courage, patience, self-honesty, and gentleness of your spirit, desperately needed in a world filled with turmoil and terror. Hear now our silent prayers of grief, anger, and compassion for your world. God, in your grace, hear our prayer. During weeks where there is so much sorrow and worry, we become sensitive to the tension between life and death. This tension helps remind us that life in Christ holds us in hope, knowing that death does not have the final say. So we lean into hope and celebrate with those who are graduating from college and high school. As they discern what is next, may we be reminded, may they be reminded that self-worth does not come from a degree or accomplishments, but instead, may they be filled with the confidence of your love. For students who are still finishing up the school year, we pray that those who are struggling to complete assignments and tests renew their hope and provide, are provided the encouragement needed to press on. Hear now our silent prayers for our youth, educators, and those who are in transition to something new. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. We also pray for our beloved ones who are sick, living in chronic pain, those living with a new diagnosis, those living with cancer, those waiting for surgery or who are in recovery. We ask that you grant comfort and peace to them. Be near those who feel abandoned, lonely, living with mental illness, or who struggle with addictions. Hear now the prayers for our family and friends who need healing. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. May our hearts be filled with joy as we celebrate those with birthdays and weddings, anniversaries and new jobs. As individuals and a community, we lift up our joys to you. Hear now our prayers of thankfulness. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. Lord, it is our desire to walk in your ways and keep from foolish compromise. Keep our hearts set on Jesus Christ so that our thoughts are not influenced by the mindset of this current age. May we be like the man planted by your many rivers of grace and love, joy, and peace. May your mercy and compassion flow through us in the places where you have planted us. And now draw our hearts into deeper relationship with you as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh 
go forth from this place first grab a cookie and coffee from the courtyard they are available to you and then as you go forth from this place go telling the truth of your lives the truth of our nation the truth of our world to God and to others so that in all we do we may love and serve Christ and ever be a part of the new creation that God has set in motion making all things new turning laments to praise. And as you do so, know that God is with you, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. God blesses you and will be with you. Amen. <laughs>